Ladies and gentlemen, in just about a week and a half to two weeks, you had President Trump being acquitted, the Lincoln Project imploding, and being a political liability to Democrats, uh, even more so than they were to Republicans. So they're just, like, nobody wants to get anywhere near them because they're so immoral. These are the people who try to present themselves as the moral foundation, the good Republicans. These were the good Republicans standing up for the Republic and the Constitution against Trump. And these people, well, one of whom, and potentially more, engaged in the most despicable, potentially engaged in the most despicable criminal activity. This is after years and years of pushing Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld's foreign policy to get the world, to get us to descend into never-ending military conflict and counterinsurgency quagmires. This is the legacy of the wonderful, good, moral Republicans in that organization. Wow, what a great, what a great moral foundation. You start off going after and insulting and trying to um, portray as disloyal people who opposed Bush's foreign policy, like Senator Max Cleland, Vietnam veteran, a hero, a triple amputee veteran, who courageously and in, in the most noble manner spoke out and opposed Bush's foreign policy. You want to know who went after him? Rick Wilson of the Lincoln Project, who's now working for, I believe, the Daily Beast or contributing. And he's always on MSNBC, CNN, just like Steve Schmidt, who, who resigned because they want to they, they remove themselves from the scandal, uh, Weaver's scandal. We have over 21 people accusing the same person that John Kasich hired <laughs> as the chief, stra- chief strategist for his 2016 campaign. So all these people are connected. You have John Kasich, you have the Lincoln Project, you have, all, you have people who... Uh, contribute for liberal publications. And it's interesting. It's like we're finding out, and we've we found out before, that all the people who made a name for themselves going after President Trump, trying to pretend that he's this monster because of his tweets, ignoring all the positive things that he accomplished, all the groundbreaking first president to step foot in North Korea to begin detente and a roadmap towards peace between North and South Korea, the Abraham Accords, peace between Israel, UAE, Bahrain. And, you know, these were accomplishments that those respective countries want Biden's administration to continue. So you can't say, oh, it's a photo op. Oh, it means nothing. Because they'll try to undermine every single accomplishment. If only presidents to allocate more funding to, President Trump allocated more funding to historically black colleges and universities than any president ever. And then you had... And hit subscribe to this channel right now because I'm going to give you context that you're definitely not going to get from the Washington Post to the New York Times. The deputy press secretary resigned. Biden's, Biden's deputy press secretary. Why? For telling a Politico journalist that he, he would destroy that individual. Think about that for a second. Hit subscribe to this channel. Tell your friends about this channel. Go to hagoodman.com. Read my writing in The Hill, The Huffington Post, Salon, The Jerusalem Post, The Roanoke Times, other publications. You can see my debates there. To my new Patreons, thank you. If you want to support my voice long term, thank you so very much. My Patreon is below in the pinned comment description and also on hagoodman.com. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the resignation of a deputy press secretary for doing something that would have been a scandal, a controversy of epic proportions if it were under Trump's administration. You have actually a, a deputy press secretary who is stating he's going to destroy a journalist, a, f- a female journalist, at, the, at Politico. What do you think the Lincoln Project would say about that? <laughs> what do you think MSNBC would be saying about President Trump's administration? With, this is only February, people. You have the, you have the Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld Republicans 
completely imploding and becoming so much of a political liability, even CNN won't talk about them. With the FBI now investigating, uh, uh, the, one of the co-founders' potential uh, allegations of horrendous criminal activity. I love when, like, I love my viewers. God bless my viewers. They're the best viewers in the entire world. I, to my amazing subscribers, thank you so much. And I get it. I understand. Sometimes there are people who are skeptical, and, but there's no good. There's no good that comes. I mean, please go ahead if you watch. You know, you could write what you'd like, tell me how you feel, but there's no good from saying, oh, yeah, nothing's going to happen here. I mean, this is a little bit different from Peter Strzok and Lisa Page and Kevin Kleinsmith. The, F the FBI doesn't have, like, there's no political utility in saving the Lincoln Project. So, whereas, you know, Caligula is being investigated by the federal government, yeah, that's going to be tough. That'll lead to impeachment in 2022 when, when Trump Republicans take over the House. But when the FBI is investigating a man who has been accused and there's evidence now of 20, uh, over 21 people, around 21 people, possibly more, of horrendous activity, that's different from, like, that's different from Hillary Clinton and private servers and top secret intelligence on servers outside of the United States government where James Comey said, ah, you know, she didn't mean to do it. So when people say, like, it's interesting. I'm not saying the people who are like, you know, very, very skeptical are the same people who listen to message boards, which I told you not to two years ago. I said the Q nonsense was absolute, an absolute hoax that was dangerous, and I was 100% right. Uh, watch the debate on hagoodman.com. I oppose that nonsense because it was an absurd, obvious hoax, dangerous message board, you know, manipulative tool. But there's people who think who 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 would have said yes, you know, this message board says this, and they would believe that. But at the same, and then now they say, well, nothing's going to happen. It's like, well, <laughs> there's a there's a middle ground from believing absolute nonsense to being skeptical. Again, the FBI doesn't have any reason. Polit there's no political utility in protecting anyone in the Lincoln Project. If anything. There's political utility in going after them. Okay, covering up Lincoln Project crimes is different because there's no there's no benefit to the FBI to do so because these that's that's that's, that's actually in their wheelhouse. That's what they do. They go after people like you know the one of the co-founders who who's alleged to have committed those heinous uh, you know deeds. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is I understand. I'm skeptical as well, and believe me. You have to look at things not from the vantage point of, oh, everything's stacked against us. If that's the case, why was President Trump president for four years? He was able to overcome an entire machine and system. So not everything is stacked against people who voted for President Trump who want an end to never-ending counterinsurgency conflicts, which is why I voted for President Trump, but, and other reasons. But um, you look at just within the past two weeks, just within the past two weeks, and this is February. He hasn't even been governing that long. What, like a month? It's not even January 20th he was sworn in. It's, it's, it's February 15th. It hasn't even been a full month, people. And there's already Deputy, Deputy uh, Press Secretary resigns. The Moral Foundation. The Republicans who, uh, who aligned themselves with the Democratic Party and who represented the Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld neoconservative ideology that plunged this country and the world into chaos and mayhem and destabilized regions of the world. They literally pushed to destabilize regions of the world. The road to you know where is paved with good intentions, so they could say, well, you know, the intelligence told us about WMD, and, you know, we tried our best, and da, da, da. All of that is irrelevant when you look at the repercussions of their actions. There's nothing that President Trump did that is as egregious or as detrimental and destructive to the planet than what President Obama did in Libya and what Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld did in numerous countries. Nothing. You could look at the, the numbers, the hundreds of thousands of traumatic brain injuries in the United States of America because of the Lincoln Project foreign policy. 
You can look at, I mean, if they're blaming Trump for the Capitol directly, even though he was acquitted, now they want an investigation for it. It's going to be, it's, it's not going to work out for them. What ha- I mean, what happened was a, the, the protest shouldn't have taken place that day. There should have been a national dialogue, discourse, debate, discussion of whatever Trump, President Trump wanted to convey. And he did not tell those people or instruct those people to do anything. Democrats are making the vapid, absurd argument that just, you know, his, his claims alone warped the minds, made, turned them into a, a, this frenzied, you know, uh, massive, gullible, impressionable people with no willpower. That they just, you know, they turned into these Frankenstein-like, you know, or zombies, these, 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 these madmen. And it's like, no, if they, if they really wanted to investigate, they'll probably exonerate President Trump even further than the acquittal because he had nothing to do with it. What President Trump did was try to push the envelope, and that was wrong. Um, the protest should never have, have happened that day, but he needed to create a discourse and discussion, not a protest. with like, There was no, nothing to be gained politically, nothing. And plus you had Twitter, and so like the potential for a catastrophe, those five people should be alive today, the potential for a catastrophe was there, but it wasn't directly his fault. It was a protest, unfortunately, that went completely out of control. We've seen uh, peaceful protests go, get completely out of control. You know, the way they look at things with Trump is they don't, the majority of people that day were peaceful. That's how media works. The majority of people, yes, the past five, six months prior to November, were, were, yeah, they had, we were peaceful, yeah. There happened to be one to two billion dollars in property damage with uh, business owners putting uh, boards up in their windows saying, we agree with, you know, fill in the left-leaning organization, please don't torch our, please don't hurt our business. And then you had 19 lives lost in d- different locations throughout the country, over 19. And you had... So many uh, buildings set ablaze and police buildings in flames that CNN couldn't even acknowledge reality. They had to say, well, it's fiery but peaceful with the building in flames. Like, literally, that's it was a meme that became reality, unfortunately. And they pretended that that didn't happen and then focused only on Trump. Again, that doesn't... That doesn't absolve, um, like President Trump shouldn't have shouldn't have had those protests, but he's not directly or legally responsible. Just like Democrats aren't legally responsible, even though their words and actions helped foster a lot of chaos on the streets of this country. Um, if that's up for debate by some pundits, I would like to ask why they didn't march. The people who are the loudest in condemnation. Uh, like the Medicare for All, $20 million venture capital people who um, claim to speak out against racism. Well, why, number one, why did one of the uh, hosts write the racist and sex- sexist um, uh, journal entries that forced Bernie Sanders to unendorse him? But also, why, why didn't you have any pundit from that organization, any left-leaning pundit, liberal or left-leaning pundit, progressive, almost all of them did not, for the past five, six months prior to November, march alongside left-leaning organizations. Why not? For the same reason that Biden, Pelosi, and Schumer won't kneel during the national anthem. The way Democrats work and the way a lot of the left works, like the people who did march, um, I give respect to. Okay, they went and they, you know... There was a lot to risk because a lot of the time it descended into, you know, something that wasn't exactly safe. But at least if you marched on the left, okay, you represented your value system. Um, But if you made if you make uh, an enormous sum of money, say you know defending Colin Kaepernick, but you won't kneel, or uh, if you if you create if you derive tremendous political utility like Democrats do, but you don't kneel, going after President Trump. So Schumer and Trump have the same vantage point on the anthem protest, but neither of them kneel. Okay, uh, the sh- uh, Democrats though derive extract political utility. The pundits, 
that oppose President Trump call him racist. Well, they weren't marching. Uh, they weren't for the same for for reasons for the re- for reasons associated with uh, criticism of those protests. I'll leave it at that. A lot of these people are duplicitous on the left, and they happen to also be voices with huge platforms. But nobody asks them simple questions like, "Well, where's the live stream footage of you actually marching?" You'll talk, you'll talk a lot, but where's the live stream footage? I'm talking about the venture capital, $20 million venture capital people and the million to two million uh, uh, sub channels. Why weren't they marching? Simple question. Um, and why don't they kneel during the national anthem? Okay, um, there's, there's obvious reasons for that because they're hypocrites. Same thing, like Jimmy Dore uh, is a hero. He asked... Uh, AOC and Bernie Sanders and Democrats, why they won't fulfill their promises. The Democratic Party promised Medicare for All, Green New Deal legislation, universal basic income, an immigration plan. Where's the immigration bill? They want to curtail the Second Amendment. That's not going to save any lives. It will not save any lives because guess what? Uh, Crazy people and criminals don't care about laws. The only people who follow laws are law-abiding citizens. That's a concept that's too difficult. I mean, then you have Hollywood celebrities with their own security details. Who are like the the loudest voices on that issue? I mean, you're talking about hypocrites. But where's the immigration policy? They they obsessed over Stephen Miller, and yet they're they're not altering his immigration policy in profound ways. The incremental changes are not what the left wants. Okay, the left is the biggest obstacle. I'm talking of, I, I, I used to be the biggest Bernie Sanders booster on the internet, according to the Huffington Post. I used to be the unofficial scribe of Sanders' most hardcore voters, according to the Washington Post. I'm letting you know, every, like right now, you will have Bernie Sanders supporters becoming supporters of President Trump. You will have Bernie Sanders supporters, more so than ever, leaving the Democratic Party, who might not support President Trump, but will join the Green Party. The Green Party is going to grow, as it should. The People's Party, Democratic Socialists of America, all the different political parties on the left, they're probably going to grow. Uh, Certain political organizations on the left who have been uh, out on the streets will probably start their own political party or political parties. Democrats are going to crumble like a... They're just going to crumble. And uh, the, the biggest obstacle has always been the far left to the Democratic Party. It was never Trump. If it was Trump, if, if they truly feared Trump, they would have removed the authorization for use of military force from, the, from President Trump. Which, by the way, I'm for, if you want to re- remove the AUMF and, and take that away from pres- uh, a president, I, whether it was President Trump or, or Biden, I wouldn't mind. I don't think you should have the AUMF. I think that you should go through Congress for everything. But that's not the way... You know, we, we haven't had a, an official war declaration since World War II. Our, our, our wars and conflicts have been through resolutions. Gulf of Tonkin resolution. Gulf of Tonkin, another intelligence failure. Give me your thoughts below. Hit subscribe to this channel right now. President Trump has a foothold on the Republican Party now forever. Um, or at least for the foreseeable future. And um, you, you're looking now at three... Defeats for Democrats, acquittal, Lincoln Project, implosion, and deputy sec- press secretary. And, and you see, like, you see the media has calmed down. Everything's calm. There's no outrage anymore, even though there are more legitimate scandals and controversies. Okay. President Trump signing executive orders. I mean, it was like the end of the world for Democrats. Biden signing executive orders, they're all happy now. They're fine, even though there's, these executive orders are controversial uh, in their own right. Give me your thoughts below. Thank you so very, very much. I'll be back numerous times.